The ever-changing marketplace in security, and more specifically for security engineers, means that our skills need to change as well, and we need to encompass a wide variety of tasks and skill sets from on-premise to cloud security to security application development to vulnerability assessment and much more. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the ever-changing space that is security engineering and how you can best prepare yourself in these blurry and vague times to get the job of your dreams and to become successful as a security engineer. Unlike other job titles such as front-end engineering or back-end engineering where the skill set is very, very honed in on one specific category of technology, security engineers in 2022 especially need to have a wide variety of skill sets in order to be lucrative to prospective employers. So to give you some background in my professional history, I'm a content creator. My name is Andrew Rowe. I started off as a software engineer. I quickly transitioned into becoming a cybersecurity software engineer where I was building security tooling and security software. Then I went into cloud computing as a cloud security engineer where I was building cloud infrastructure and cloud applications to help accomplish security tasks for a wide variety of clients. And now I am currently a lead software engineer at a cybersecurity company. With that mind, the past six to seven years of being a security software engineer or a security engineer has led me to the conclusion that the line of what is security engineering and what is not security engineering has become extremely blurry over the past couple of years. While traditional job duties of a security engineer, such as vulnerability patching, vulnerability testing, and responding to security incidents are still very much in play, the new age of cloud and the popularization of software development has introduced new skills to be learned as security engineers for us to remain competent and competitive in the current market. For example, as a cloud security engineer, I not only handled weekly server patching for clients, but I also was in charge of developing code bases using infrastructure as code to create comprehensive logging and monitoring solutions for a multitude of AWS accounts. If infrastructure as code is something you're interested in, I'll leave a link down in the description below for AWS CDK docs or infrastructure as code docs, where you can learn all about infrastructure as code and how you can leverage it and be a more comprehensive security engineer and hopefully entice future employers with this newfound skill. But while I was doing these tasks, I was still responding to security incidents. I was still checking server logs and responding to client concerns over latest vulnerability reports, as well as communicating with developers and collaborating with de developers to do code reviews and consult on best practices. As you can see, some of the job description that I just gave you or the duties that I had to perform could be seen as cloud engineer tasks or cloud security engineer tasks. But as a security engineer, I think that the best piece of advice that I can give you is not one that I see many people talking about. And it's the fact that we as security engineers need to evolve as technology evolves. And the job title for the next couple of years is one that's looking pretty blurry because of all the newfound technology that we're seeing in the industry, plus all of the rapid development that we're seeing within products in the security space. As a modern security engineer, when you're working with a company, specifically one with a large software development team, you need to be able to slot in seamlessly and be just as technically proficient as the rest of the engineers on that team. So if you have a big DevOps team, you need to know a lot about CICD and a lot of software development testing that you can perform to then help the DevOps or the software development team speed up their workflows without restricting them in, in any way. I think this is where the blurry line of security engineering or modern security engineering, as I like to call it, is coming in because a lot of traditional security engineers are very bash or Linux or terminal heavy people where they're constantly looking through server logs, looking for potential vulnerabilities like a security researcher, or they're doing a lot of scans to make sure the systems are as hard and as secure as possible. But their modern security engineer needs to be one that meets with software engineering or DevOps teams to try to come and formulate plans to ship product as fast as possible, but also as secure as possible. Because with the modern technology that we have, such as CIC, CD pipelines to ship code from dev to test to prod as quickly as we can. We also need to adapt as modern security professionals and take the ambiguity of the current security engineering landscape and try to use it to our advantage to show our value to other pieces of the organization. I'm going to give you guys three different tips that you can use in order to learn the skills that are going to make you that proficient engineer. First, I would say become as comfortable as you possibly can with the cloud, cloud computing, and also an infrastructure as code language. This is going to help 
help you slot in seamlessly with DevOps and software because you're going to be committing code to the same repositories that they are, and you're going to be able to build software and infrastructure, specifically cloud infrastructure, right alongside of the actual engineers who are building the product that you're shipping. This is going to get you two things. It's going to first get you trust from other engineers so that they know that you can operate yourself within a code base, but it's also going to show them that you are not only someone who can consult on best practices, you're also someone that can implement them, you understand the code that they're writing, and you can also slot in and help them to increase their security without slowing down their development time. The second piece of advice I'm going to offer you guys is to get up to speed with modern implementations of container testing and CICD workflows so that your testing and security hardening can float right into the development process that a DevOps engineer or a software engineer would have. This is going to help you guys be a less restrictive force in your organization where your security hardening and security testing is going to be a part of the development process, but it's also not going to hinder any of the security adherences that you have to abide by. You're not going to be making concessions as a security professional in order to just ship product faster. You're going to take a different approach and become more agile when it comes to the actual development and security testing of a product, but you're also still going to be doing all the things that you should be doing as a security engineer to adhere to best practices. And my third piece of advice is more of a general one, but really embrace the ambiguity of modern security engineering. There's a lot of new technologies to learn. We need to adapt from being just traditional security engineers, and that may be a scary prospect, but there's so much technology to learn. There's so many things to advance in and to sharpen your skills in. So really just sink your teeth in and become immersed in the new technology for security engineers and for security professionals alike so that we can ship meaningful, successful, and secure products alongside development teams and modern day organizations. So I hope this video helped you guys if you're looking to become a prospective security engineer and you're looking to slot into the so-called vague security engineering workforce that we may see today. I really think that the job title has expanded in a positive way and that we should embrace all of the new technology that we have to learn and it will only be better for it. So if this video helped you, I hope you give a like and you comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.